This time we will continue the specifications of this uh, 16 key matrix key path, you know, uh, trying to record a timing diagram, how the signals are going to evolve in time. Remember, right, that we have here a matrix encoder 16 key. We've been discussing the symbol. We know a commercial chip example like the 74C922. We know very well what kind of inputs and outputs are required. Okay, we have making we've been making comparisons with a combinational encoder, and now perhaps it's time to continue trying to record, for example, how to draw and a sketch of a timing diagram because in this way we can connect that very well with the state diagram okay uh, that it's the starting point of the planning section and we can continue later on developing and going through the functional simulation the gate level and finally the prototype so this is our objective right to design that kind of chip something very similar to a commercial one and now it's time for discussing how it's going to be possible to imagining the this device working in time so that later this kind of timing diagram can be translated into a test bench uh, when that tool is required for example to run the functional simulation right okay right if uh if you've been thinking about the specifications and trying to understand this problem you know the idea of the block matrix encoder 16 key the way that you connect every one of the switches or buttons in each intersection of columns and rows uh, if you think about the row output that is going to generate the zero right the zero that is going to be used uh, to detect in the column section when you've been clicking a key if you've been thinking about all these ideas that you can represent in the schema or you can complement every time using paper for example if you think about the rows that are going to be generated here it is clear that for example you will drive first the three and then the two the one or the zero or the a b c d you see if you talk about rows a row b row c and row d that way so the first thing that you will do from this system is to drive the row three so this is a zero one 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 as the first code and then the next code for scanning the second row is going to be one zero one one and then one one zero one and finally, the last code here, in, because you have four rows, is 1110. This is what you are going to do. Uh, and again, 0111. So that, that one called code, that's a single zero every time, that is used for detecting a key when you are pressing the push button. All right? So if you know that, and you know as well what kind of code, is going to be generated in the columns section you see you read this column you read the other column number two or the column number one or the column number zero so the column section can be as well several codes right depending on if you do nothing or you are clicking one key in one column or in another right for example uh, one code that is going to be present almost all the time because you are not touching the keyboard is 1111, right? This is why we rather like to do this here, okay? We will do that thing of uh, organizing the columns using an AND gate. So we will invent this signal that is going to be very convenient. The row scan enable. So if you are not touching the keyboard, the columns read something like this, 1111, so the row scan enable is high. In this way, you may go scanning one code after the other because no one is touching the keyboard, so this is what the system is going to do, to go from one code to the next, scanning 
you see, giving a chance to every one of the rows to have a zero at a time, that way, okay? And then perhaps if you are clicking the, the key number D, for example, and it happens that you've got this code here, 1110, you see, uh, or sorry, the, the key B, so if you, are, you have 1011 in this row, you see, this is the row uh, B, and you are clicking the or the row two. You see, the row two is better. The row two. So when you've got the row two code, you have one zero one one, and in this way you have a zero. See, so if you click the B, you can detect that. In which way? Well, because you have one 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 zero, right? So this is a possible code. The same if you click the six or the five or the four. So you have very well repeated for every one of the rows this kind of four codes you see this is for detecting the b this one is for detecting the six this one if you are clicking the five right one zero one one and the other code here is when you click the four so the four is zero one 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 right something like this and this Four codes, they look like very much scanning codes, but be aware because they are not the scanning codes. They are codes that you will read or sample at the input of the system matrix encoder 16 keys if you are clicking any one of the keys in this row, the 4, the 5, the 6, or the B. Or you will see, look at that, you, you get the same codes. If you click the 1 instead of the code 4, the key 4, if you click the 1, you get the same, right? for another row when the row is the row three okay you have a zero here so you you've got zero one 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 to detect the four or to detect the one so you get the same code zero one 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 f when you click the one the four the seven and the f that's it you see so well you can go this way discussing about what is going to be the input of the system and what is going to be the output, right? But you know there is a better way to represent that in time and this is the timing diagram. Something that can be elaborated this way. If everything depends on the clock, the clock goes the first signal. So you first go and draw the clock, some pulses, right? As many as you need, okay? So this is the clock period this is the T-clock, something that later on in BHDL you will call clock period, a constant, for example, that here, if the clock is 200 Hz, you have a clock of 5 milliseconds, right? 5 milliseconds, so 200 clocks per second. This is the way you are going to generate the scanning codes in this system. You see, quite very high speed in relation to the, 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 this, this task that you do here. You click a, a button at the human scale. You see, you, you take a second, half a second. So it's, it's something slow compared with the frequency that you are using here for generating the scanning codes. All right. Then there is something else. Every time that you have a sequential system, you have to think about the clear direct naturally. The clear direct happens this way. Anytime you would like to start something, you are applying a one, so you are resetting the machine because the machine can be in any one of the states possible. So that is the situation. You will start, for example, after powering up the system, by means of a power-up circuit, you see, you generate this one to be able to start from a very well-known state and then to the next, accordingly to the uh, signals that you are using to go from one state to the next, in this kind of transitions, right? Then what? Well, if you like to detect or you like to elaborate the data, the group select and the rows, well, very well. You, you first of all have to be aware of the columns, okay? Because the columns is what you are going to read here. Columns, 
all right? So the columns will be any one of these codes, right? So you leave some space here to represent in time the columns, right? And then if you've got the columns, you can start thinking about the outputs. One output that is uh, here essentially is the rows. So why not to draw the rows, right? And after representing the rows, you can generate group select and you can generate the data. And the data is going to be the binary code associated to the key that you are clicking, okay? So that is the initial representation of the timing diagram for this exercise. And now it's this idea of going, you see, recording that in time, you see, because the things are going to evolve from the previous situation depending on what you do with your fingers on this matrix keypad. Right, but first of all, we have to initialize the system, and that happens all the time in the same way. Okay, before the clear direct pulls, there is nothing to say, you know nothing about the system, so you know that everything goes this way. Before this initial level, no one knows what kind of output you've got, so you, you you may imagine whatever you like for the columns, because this is an input to the system, but not the outputs. The outputs may be very well unknown. So you know nothing about group select, you know nothing about the rows or the data. And now what? Because there is a level one in clear direct, from just now the system starts. And I think that if you keep an eye on the state diagram, the initial state of this circuit is you know, the initial state is the row A, right? Row A, this one, the one that is the, the row 3 or the row A, B, row C and row D. You see, this is the initial one. So, yes, why not? It's a good idea as well to represent here the, you know, the signal that, that means the states. Remember that here you have a finite state machine solving this later. The finite state machine generates CC1, CC2. The CC1 is for the next state logic, but the CC2 is for generate the nine wires, group select, data, and the rows. The four wires represent the rows. The CC1 is for generating the next state to go. So this signal is feedback to the state register that you know is a, a bank of data registers, the, the data flip-flops, and here you have the signal of interest, which is the current state. And the current state, you know, is the feedback and becomes an input to the CC2 and the CC1 in a way that, for example, from the columns values, okay, from the columns values that you are reading, Okay, by means of this AND, why not? We have an AND here that takes the four wires of the columns. So the columns can generate this way. Uh, the CC2, you see a true table to generate the data from the current internal current state that at the same time is connected to the clock and to the clear direct. So the current state, the four wires, or where? No, the four, no, that depends on the code that you are using to encode the internal state. So you let it be R, okay? For example, if you have eight states, eight states can be coded in binary using three bits. So you can have here three flip-flops D, if this is the code that you are using, but eight states can be represented as well in one hot code using eight flip-flops the type so r may be three if using binary or gray or r may be eight if you are using one hot so that is an internal value that is something that you can configure later in the synthesizer very well but, but here you are the current state is a feedback so in order to decide where to go next you can use this signal that is group or it is not it's a row you see row 
scan enable and it's taken using the four columns from the input. So this is the machine that is running here and this is the state diagram. The state, no, that, that is not the state diagram, the state register, you see? So it's a good idea in, in this functional and conceptual representation in time to represent as well here this signal, okay? And this signal is current state. The other one is also possible. The next state to go is also possible to be represented here. So there is no problem. So you see, before the clear direct, you know nothing about which is the internal state. But from now on and up to the next rising edge, which is this one, you see, this is the first rising edge of the clock of the interest. So, up to this point, you see, you know very well that the current state now is very well known, is rho A state. You see, rho A state, the data, well, we will imagine that the columns are generating uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, so this means that no one is clicking a single button, so the, the columns are generating this code here, one, 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 no clicks, you see, no click. So if you are not clicking a single key, you have detected here, you are sampling all the time, one, 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 one. So you're going to start this way, see, one, 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 one in the columns. So this means that you don't have to do anything, but row A means that the data now is zero. Right, the data is the zero, and the group select is zero, and the rows is this one called code that generates zero, one, 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 right? That is the initial situation. That is very important. You see, you have to know how the machine starts. And then probably here in the second, what you have to do in time is go and simulate several situations uh, representing the idea that you are clicking because probably this column, you will be simulating this in model sim, for example, by means of a test bench. So it's going to be up to you to drive this code here. For example, one, 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 right? So it's good as well to leave that this way several clocks, why not? So you may imagine that nothing happens for several clocks. So this is the second clock of interest. This is the third clock of interest. So nothing happens at all. And then perhaps here something happens later on. You see, you have three or four clocks, but they may be half a million clocks because you are you have the keyboard there, but you are not touching anything. So for several millions of clocks, why not? The situation remains stable, doing what the system has to do. And what is this thing that the system has to do here? What means the stability here? Well, stability means generating this wheel of a states. You see, row three, row two, row one, and row zero. This way, generating this counting. So, one clock, because you see, nothing is detected. So if nothing is detected up to this point, for example, this is what you get, one, 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 one. And now you have for one clock, zero, one, one, one. The next clock is one, zero, one, one. The next clock is one, one, zero, one. And the next clock is one, 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 zero. And so the next, you see, so uh, you are starting again. 0, 1, 1, 1, that way, and that goes forever. So group select is 0 all the time. Data is the same, you see nothing happens. Yeah. Data is 0, and this 0 means, you know, this is a binary number, a decimal number, that means 0, 0, 0, 0. And the current state, you see, the current state is uh, this one, this one, this one, 
at that one. You see, you go uh, transiting from one state to the next. So this is the current state rho A. This is a different one, rho B. This is another code, rho C. And this is another code, rho D. And this is yet again another time, you see, rho A. That is the way the system works. Hmm? Whatever it is, whatever it is, the internal combination in which you have represented this level. It may be 8 bit because you are using one hot, or it may be only three bits because that's okay. All right, so you see, this is the situation in which you can annotate now uh, very well uh, scanning, scanning the keyboard. Or the key path, okay? Scanning the key path, and this is not known, you see, undefined. Undefined that way. So, scanning the key path, so that, that can go this way. Then, what? Well, now it's time to imagine a situation that is going to be different. For example, clicking a key, I don't know. Let's click, for example, the 8, okay? What happens if you now click the 8? What is going to happen if you click the 8? So here you may say, I will click 8, you see? Now, because it's me who do that and I have nothing to do with the clock, so when I click it's going to be any time between the period, naturally. All right, so now I'm clicking the 8. So what, what is going to happen? What is the current situation at this state now? Look at this. This is, uh, in order to detect the click 8, what has to be here, the code? Which has to be the code here? I guess that if I have to be able to detect the 8, you see, the 8 is going to generate something like this, 1, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, 1, 1, this is, this is going to be for detecting the 5 and the 8 as well, but you know, in order to be able to detect this clicking, you have to have something like this, 1, 1, 0, 1. And what is that happening here? You see, you have 1, 1, 1, 0. Just the next code, so nothing happens, you see, you click the 8, but the system do not notice that situation yet because the code that now is generating the machine in the rows is not the right one for detecting the 8. Okay, look at this. That now that I'm clicking the 8, the code that the machine generates is the one that is used for scanning the row 0 or the row D, you see, that, that one. 1, 1, 1, 0. So you see, this is what the machine is generating now. So, well, nothing happens. I click, but nothing happens. So, you see, I'm still detecting, you see, even if I do that, nothing happens. I still go and get 1, 1, 1, 1. That's the thing. You see, I do that connection because of my finger clicking the button. But because I haven't got yet 1101, one, one, nothing is detected, okay, at, the, at this time. So, well, I have to go advancing several other clocks this way, okay, several other clocks, all right. And now perhaps I'm going to be able to detect that. Let, let me see. Because you see, I've got the row A. Here I've got the row B. And here I've got the code that I like to be, the row C. Okay, this is what I've got here. And here is where I've got the row C. You see, the row C is just 1101. One, one. Is that right? So now, when my machine generates this, this, this current, as well, this code is here, you see, this is the, uh, 
one 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 zero zero this is uh, one zero one one and here I've got the one one zero one now yes you see now if this is what I've got from this rising edge here because I've got uh, one one zero one and I'm clicking the D the, the, the eight now yes you see from now on in some kind of a synchronicity I'm detecting now uh, this code which is uh, one zero one one you see that one zero one one because I'm clicking the eight one zero one one and I've been able to detect that okay I clicked here but you see the machine has to move around this several states in order to get the right code to be able to detect that situation in the columns all right so let me see what happens now I have here a group select zero and here I have to do that thing group select goes high because here I've detected uh, 1011 all right and what about the data well the CC2 you see the CC2 is going to detect what it's going to generate the code 8 so it's going to generate 1000 because this is the binary code for the 8 all right something like this all right something like this hmm? and I'm still clicking the button right I'm still clicking the button 8 and the clock is evolving so I have several more clocks you see and I have to do this task of detecting you see I have to do this task of detecting uh, and encoding the key so be careful perhaps it's not that fast what you see you have here the row A the row B the row C and what I'm doing now is jumping to the row C encoding here is where I I was here and I've detected that you see uh, the row scan enable is zero and I zoom here right so in some way perhaps I should represent as well here below the columns the row uh, scan enable signal why not I have room to do that rows so if I represent this row scan enable, this is going to be one all the time because it's just the end. But here you see it's a zero. All right. Because this happens immediately. I click the eight. Well, the eight is being clicked. And it's detected because the machine generates this code. So then what? Well, this is what happens here. You see and now I can be here for a while generating the right output and group select one and keeping the same row so the same row has to be the row one one zero one for a while and it has to be like that you see I have to have this loop because I'm still clicking the, the key all right so group select goes high for more than one clock and the data now changes the data generated from now on is one zero 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 the eight for several clocks all right and after being in the row c okay the next state to go is row c detected or row c decoded so you see row a row b here row c and now for several clocks row C uh, decoding or encoding you right and that happens you see uh, so this is click here so you see here this means that 
I'm still clicking the button, you see, the, the button is still clicked. Button pressed. Well, so you press it, but normally you will press that for more than five milliseconds. So this situation of keeping your finger pressing the button, making this electrical contact, will go through several tiny clocks, right? That's it. And the machine will remain stable in this row C encoding, generating these uh, vectors, you see, 1000, because it's the code of the 8. Okay, this is the 8. And then what? You have a group select, and then you, you have the you have the the row output, okay? One one zero one because one one zero one is the one that allows you to keep this situation for a while. And that's it. Let let it be like that for a while, right? So after several more clocks being in this state, okay, the many you like, what is going to happen later on? That, for example, you are going to release the button, right? So here, for example, here you are releasing the, the key, okay? Here you are going to release the button, all right? So here you click and here you release the eight button and so what? What now? Well, the machine has been stable in this loop, grossy decoding for several clocks, right? This way. Rosy decoding. This is where you are now. And here you have decided to release the button. And so what, what is the meaning of this? Well, the machine do nothing until the next rising edge of interest. Okay, because this is an asynchronous event. This is you doing that thing of releasing the button. All right. But who is detecting this situation? Who is detecting that you are not anymore making an electrical contact? Naturally, the columns. The columns are not going to be anymore, uh, you know, uh, one, zero, one, one. That is not going to happen anymore, right? Okay. The columns are not going to be anymore one, zero, one, one, because from now on, from now on, the columns will be reading 1111 again. Is that right? Because you have released the button. So from now on, this is what you've got here. And what happens now? If this is what happens, 1111 is in the columns, you have this AND, and now the row scan enable goes high again. And if this row scan enable goes high, you see you have here you here have this uh, situation. You go to the next scanning row D. That, that is what you happens. It happens here. You do that jump to the next state. So this is what you can represent here very well in the next rising edge. So here in this situation, in this time, is when you are going to change from row C decoding to the next one that is row D. Okay, row D. All right. Then there is a, another clock. And if you've got another clock, you know that there is the wheel again. So this is row A. And so on and so forth. So you see the data that was A for a while changes again from now on because you are in row D or row A or row B the data from this uh, clock you see the data from this clock goes back to the uh, 
0, 0, 0, 0. And the group select that was high for all this period of time goes back to 0. OK. It was 1 because you were clicking. All right. And the rows that was freezed here, 1, 1, 0, 1, from this point and on, you see this is kept for several clocks until this time here when you have not anymore 1101 but the next code that belongs to the row D and the row D code for scanning is 1110 something like B 1110 and then there is the row A which is 0111 and etc one zero one one and so on and so forth so you see this is the typical uh, timing diagram associated to this application just explaining you see that long and with that detail what happens considering the current state the data the group select the rows the row is can enable thing ah, by the way you see the row is can enable that was zero from now on goes high you see because there is no more key detected you see this goes high again because from when you've got one 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 what well what is that you say from the pools or no not from the pools you see it's here here is when it goes high right now because here is when you are releasing it's a simple hand you see it's a combination of circuits, so every time that you, every time, just when you are releasing the button, this signal goes high. So in some way that is also useful for you to understand a little bit better what is the synchronous here and what has to be synchronized. You see the outputs of the circuit has to be synchronous. Data, group select and rows, because they depend on the current state of the machine. And the current state of the machine are not changing unless you have the right rising edge, okay, of the clock. But other signals that you are elaborating here, like the row scan enable, can change immediately when the input changes, like this, you see? So that's it, okay? Now, if you have time, you can explore the situation, click in another key, and and repeat the process to be just aware of, in the end, to comprehend very well what happens here, because remember that you have row A and row A decoded, row B, row B decoded, row C, row C decoded, and row D, row D decoded, and that way. So that picture is the one that you see finalizes in some way the description of the specifications, and it connects very well with the plan that starts describing with precision the state diagram so that you can adapt the general machine you see you can adapt the general machine to your circumstances which is something like this uh, your problem represents that you have the columns and the right is can enable as inputs and generate exactly these outputs and this is your next state and current state and the like okay right